The project as a whole is advancing simultaneously at both the Horopito and Ohakuni ends. At the Ohakuni end, one of the major contracts is the replacement of the old Hapua Whenua viaduct with a new pre-stressed concrete structure that, because of the gradient and lateral restrictions, has to be both curved and climbing. And this, in turn, has produced some unusual features. The unusual nature of this particular bridge is the fact of its height and its length. The, uh, the structure is 414 metres long and it's a continuous concrete deck. It's cast segmentally um, 20 metre pause at a time, but it's pre-stressed and by the action of the pre-stress the deck is locked together and will act as one long 414 metre long piece of concrete. Uh, the deck itself is relatively light in, uh, in section and very relatively flexible. Uh, we expect to get uh, large movements due to temperature and actual loading such as the train passing across the bridge. The bridge is curved and uh, we could develop an outward sweep of the train as it's, as it's coming across the bridge. This puts unusual sideways bending into the structure. The unusual combination of the height, length, curvature and slenderness of the bridge mean that engineering tolerances on this project are critical. And the major work now for Des Bull and his clerk of works, Rangi Paki, is to ensure that those tolerances are met. I just keep an eye on those. The, out and the inner two are the ones that I'm worried about. Yeah, I think maybe we should go and have a look at this and sort of check it out together. Yeah. Good idea. Every stage of the work has to be checked against specifications. This time, it's the pre-pour inspection of the steel reinforcing cages on Pier 5, which is nine storeys high. Clark of Works Pucky can leave nothing to chance. Tolerances on this structure and the bridge structures in particular are very important. Uh, the, the, by the nature of the structure, because she's so relatively light and uh, pre-stressed uh, concrete and a continuous deck, that uh, we have set tolerances on the deck uh, levels, uh, deck shape, have to be within 10 mils typically. The piers themselves are uh, relatively important. Because they're so tall, uh, we have a plus or minus 30 millimetre placement tolerance on the uh, position of the pier so that we don't build any unusual eccentricities into the pier by the time we get to the actual top of the structure because typically the piers are uh, six seven stories high and our tallest is 14 stories so we have very very tight tolerances so we don't build any unusual loadings into the structure meanwhile beyond the bridge construction the frontier of the earthworks advances daily The task of the advance guard is to clear the vegetation cover within the surveyed limits, which are carefully marked out with tape to avoid any unnecessary clearing. The undergrowth is taken out first, and then the large trees. The contractors for this work were specially selected to work on an hourly rate under the direct control of railway site engineers and advised by lands and survey architects. Protection of the park is taken very seriously. This man was taking no chances of the tree falling the wrong side of the yellow tape. He's also worried that this old timer might be rotten in the centre. He took four hours to carefully make his cut, with a winch taking the strain. But when it did go, it was rewarded with a perfect fall. The cleared vegetation matter isn't dumped as waste. Together with the topsoil, it forms an important part of the rehabilitation program of work sites once construction is completed. The idea is to use all the seed and nutrient materials to aid regeneration of the naturally occurring forest. 
At the Horopito end, this surface material is being gathered to rehabilitate an existing dump zone, situated between the old and new alignments, just before the Tal Nui viaduct. This surface layer of seeds, decaying matter and topsoil, is deliberately placed to provide the right microclimate for natural regeneration of local species. Without carefully recreating the conditions of natural regeneration, sites like this could only support stubby secondary growth. But with this restoration, the dump zone will eventually carry a forest cover as luxurious as that surrounding it. But just nearby, on the cutting approaching the new Taunui viaduct, the geological limitations have taken their toll of the forest. This laha material has proved so unstable that the intended cutting width is having to be widened to give stable slopes down to the right depth. This cutting, for instance, is something of the order of going to be about uh, 65 metres wide by about 20 metres deep. And we need all of that width to get down to our required formation width at rail level. And uh, that, of course, poses a problem for the National Park and the amount of ground we've got to take. On such a large project, it's, there's bound to be engineering problems crop up from time to time, uh, changes, unforeseen things, and uh, those engineering, the solutions to those engineering problems are not always uh, in the best for the environment, but I think we've managed in most cases to reach pretty good compromises uh, between the engineering uh, point of view and the environment point of view. Well, we've been in fairly close consultation with the um, Lands and Survey uh, and the National Park people in the form of the park ranger and our landscape architect who advise us generally on what we can, how far we can go uh, and what we can do and in turn we try to get the whole, the whole earthworks site rehabilitated um, to a acceptable standard. Martin Nichols, a landscape architect with Lands and Survey, has investigated and made recommendations on a number of rehabilitation techniques. Here he's inspecting one technique where manuka slash has been laid over a cleared area. If the manuka is collected at the right time of year, the seed is released from the pods into the ground beneath, and the manuka itself provides the necessary shelter while they grow. Railways have taken their environmental responsibilities very seriously. Contractors have been fully informed of safeguards for the park and its wildlife. Their environmental record to date remains good. Well, generally it's been, uh, it's been very good, I think. There have been, uh, as one would expect, I think, a few small problems, but uh, on the whole it's gone very well. With the environmental and engineering requirements of the project being met, District Engineer Rod Davies is satisfied with progress. Uh, contracting is never easy. There are always obstacles and problems to overcome. And to date we've uh, come across quite a few problems. Uh, and a lot of problems are associated with working in a site like this where you've got five different big contractors, five different big contracts, and working one in with the other is not always easy. Uh, but to date, uh, we've managed to overcome a lot, a lot of these problems, and uh, I'm very pleased. But working in these conditions has also given the men a healthy respect for the old-timers who came before them. I'm most sympathetic for the, the old pioneer railway developers, the, the conditions they must have put up with in trying just to build the structures are extremely difficult from what we've experienced here. And we have the advantage of modern technology where they didn't. Uh, geology, uh, lie of the land, native bush, in fact that we've got so many 
gullies and hills on this actual uh, deviation itself must have posed phenomenal problems for just even getting the materials in to construct the railway line, let alone building such structures as the old Harper Whanua Bridge. But unlike the old railway pioneers, today's men are working to a strict deadline. The completion of the electrification of the main trunk in 1987. Curiously, as this section of track was the last to be joined in 1909, so the wires of electrification from Auckland and Wellington will join on this section in 87. Once again, the mountain makes its presence felt.